Let me hold the can this time. Today's video is brought to you by Wood Defender. Did you know that SWI actually got its start right here in Powell, Wyoming? And you're probably asking yourself, now I can't quite place that on a map because most people can't even tell me where Wyoming is, which is amazing. So we don't even bother trying to tell people the town we live in. We just say Yellowstone. Yellowstone's a big reference. People can go like, oh yeah, I heard of Yellowstone. Yeah, not the show, the actual thing, you know, big geysers, buffalo, bears, you know, the things that'll eat you. Today, I'd like to walk you through our newest facility, which is actually original and show you where we got our start as SWI in 2000. 2014. Hey, welcome back. So if you'd have showed up to SWI in 2014, this is where you would have seen us. And believe it or not, in this little shed behind me, the worldwide shed quarters, you'd have found three people working inside this shed. Three. And this is a 16 by 20 shed that we actually built ourselves. This is all we had was a piece of property and this shed. So this is a piece of property that my in-laws gifted to my wife and I, and we actually got this piece of property in 2002. It started off as Olson Fencing, and if you want more information about Olson Fencing and how we started our career as Olson Fencing, check out the successful contractor Olson Fencing story to find out how we got our start and where it all went wrong. Because you know what? Rome wasn't built in a day, and we have definitely got a sordid history behind us. But this is where it all started over again, I guess. All that was here was this green chain link fence and this gate operator in this shed piece by piece we started adding things and we had some connexes over here off to my right hand side where we stored all of our stuff and I still have pictures of when we had all of our shelves with all our chaining fittings in these connexes we didn't even have a bathroom we had to have a porta potty out here on the premises could take care of business if you know what I mean it was very rudimentary and then we just started slowly improving and growing and doing different things until eventually we moved to Cody which is the facility that you've seen now before we moved to Cody though we did one other thing so behind me, you will see what became our office. From 2014 to 2018, we operated out of that little shed. Then we thought we were, man, we were living high on the hog when we finally got this trailer house and we turned that into an office. We did it! That was amazing. When we moved to Cody, we decided that this office really served no purpose, so we ended up converting it back over to a residence, and now we rent this out. So this is just a rental property kind of at the north end of what is now a five-acre lot here in Powell, Wyoming. Over here is our pump shed. I remember building this thing when I was, geez, I was probably 24 years old. In 2002, we built this pump shed, which is where we have our well. It has our well and our pressure tank and all that stuff. And then we got sick and tired of using the outhouse. We started having some ladies, and they were like, this, this is not this is not cool and so we actually installed a bathroom in the pump shed so now it's a pump shed plus it's a bathroom somebody needs to go in there and like mitigate so the entire property is fenced in seven foot tall chain link fence and you'll notice that none of it has the top rail and also we didn't use barbed wire why didn't we use barbed wire on our fence because i challenge any one of you to go and climb that fence without a top rail and you'll find out that the barbed wire doesn't add as much security as removing the top rail that is so impossible to climb, you will mess yourself up if you try and climb it. That's why we chose to go a little bit taller and just do straight top tension wire with no top rail for the security. So that's a little hintful fact right there for all you people looking for more security without the barbed wire. It'll save you cost, actually. That's easier to do. So we put this horizontal privacy fence up just uh, about a week and a half ago, and the reason we did that is because on the other side of this, that's my vacation house, ish, ish. Come on in, come on in. So this is the heart of the beast. This is a 60 by 100 pole barn, basically, and we tend the entire inside so that we could get really good lighting. One of the things I've never really enjoyed is going into a shop where you can't see what you're doing. So we've installed all these LED lights. This portion right here is probably about 60 by 60. We installed a lift so we can work on some of the trucks. We store some tools in here, some concrete. Hey, do you know these guys? That's Connor. And you all know Damon. I call these guys in when I need to get into tight spaces because of their small, small size. What do we have behind door number two? That's gonna be a sound violation. <laughs> we have to turn that off. Hey, you've probably figured it out by now, but this is the fabrication shop. So this area is about 20 feet wide, 60 feet deep. This is where we can do all of our custom aluminum gates, custom steel gates, any kind of custom fabrication we need because right over here, we have our Spark Robotics plasma table. Uh, we opted for the waterbed to help keep the smoke down. What is this? Eight by 10, five by 10. 
Yep, six by 12. And powering the Spark Robotics plasma table is the Hypotherm 65, which we found works really, really well because in addition to this, we also have this. He's gonna make noise, isn't he? They just wanna work. So this is the Bintech Dragon. Bintech Dragon. And I think it's like the A40. But what this does is it will process any tubular or long steel, aluminum, whatever. So we can take pipe and we can cut all kinds of special holes in it. The plasma table works really good on long flat sheets of steel. This works on all of the other special shapes. Angle iron, square tubing, round tubing, channel iron. So it'll process it and cut it however we want, knock holes in it. This is something that definitely takes some time to learn the computer, but once you do, wow, the power horse that this is, is amazing. Uh, I don't know what they're doing here. Oh, I know what these are. I know exactly what these are. This is where they build things like post extensions. Somebody wants to make their fence taller. Throughout the entire shop, you'll see these blue air lines that we dropped down. So we spent quite a lot of extra money to make sure that we had air connections in the entire shop. What we found is that number one, PVC is terrible and steel rusts. So these air lines are all plumbed in throughout the entire shop, both on this side and the other side to this nice air compressor. That's so nice to be able to just plug in anywhere. We also have cord reels that we can just pull power off at any point in the shop. So you're never very far from being able to get power outside the shop and work all the way around the shop, either with power or air. Hey guys, we hope you guys are enjoying today's video. We wanted to drop in and tell you a thing or two about today's sponsor, Wood Defender. We love these guys. They have a great product. Wood Defender is oil-based, so therefore you're not gonna have any chipping, cracking, or flaking of your fence stain. Wood Defender is self-leveling. If you cover your fence to the point of saturation, you're not gonna be able to see a heavier spot and a lighter spot. Also, if you start and stop, you're not gonna see any stitch lines. You are gonna have some drips, you're gonna have some runs, but you're not gonna see them because it's self-leveling. I don't wanna go out there with a paintbrush and stain my fence. No, no, you're thinking the wrong thing. Wood Defender is so easy to apply. Pick up a simple weed sprayer and away you go, spraying down your fence. Now what about overspray? Is that difficult to clean off? Wood Defender is super easy to clean up off of non-porous surfaces. Just take a dry rag, maybe some dish soap and water, and wipe it right off. On porous surfaces, it takes just a little extra prep work with either a drop cloth, some dish soap, and some water. Wood Defender has been family owned since 1952, and they have amazing customer service to match. Wood Defender has dealers in every state who can ship anywhere just like us. Make sure and see the link below. And now back to the video. This is one of the welders that we use. What he's doing now is he's hard surfacing this giant 18 inch auger for a project we have coming up. He's got to do this to several of them. Before they hard surface it, they actually add rebar all the way around the edge. What we found is, is that when you get really powdery soil conditions, this helps that soil stay on the auger a little bit better. And then they hard surface the edge so that that gives it a wear point. So they've got a special wire in there that allows them to hard surface it. They're working on making sure these things can go out and see some abuse before we got to redo them again. We got four or five, maybe six of these they're doing. Now this is something. What this is, is this is a welding table, like a fitment table. Very precise, very flat. We've got these special clamps that we can put into it anywhere on the table and then tighten these clamps down. We've got blocks that we can use to square things up. And these were extra, but this is a table that was actually made and actually developed by a channel called Fireball Tool. Now, if you haven't checked out Fireball Tool, go over there, check them out, let them know that SWI sent you and let them know you saw this table on SWI's channel. We have one of these looking to probably get another one of these. They're extremely expensive, but if you wanna do precision, really nice welding work, this is what you need. Very heavy too. So we can put blocks on the side of these, we can put it on the top, and there's just so much variety we can do. We even have magnet spacers in a kit somewhere so that we can get extreme precision without having to do a bunch of measuring. Basically helping us make jigs if we wanna make a bunch of parts repetitively. This is one of the cornerstones to our welding fabrication shop. Uh, check it out on Fireball Tools. We'll drop a link right down below where you can see where to buy that and check that channel out. Let them know we sent you. Hey, do you wanna see the super secret area on the other side of the shop? I'll tell you a little story about that. Let's go. Hey, you know this guy. Who's this guy? Hi, how are you? I thought you worked, you're in tennis shoes. This is tennis shoe week? This is tennis shoe week, okay. It's National Tennis Shoe Week. Yeah, National. Okay, you heard it here first. This is a gate that you probably saw being built by Nolan and it's been waiting all winter to get installed because it's going in Jackson. And if you know anything about Jackson, a little bit of snow, we've been waiting for that snow to melt and they're going next week to install 
this gate that we custom fabricated with these great big aluminum posts. So it's sitting here ready for install and going out to the customer shortly. We might even show you what that looks like when it's all done. So this is the loft. This is the break room. This is where Eli does a lot of his CAD work on this computer and then downloads the files down there. So he has a nice workstation to be able to do all that stuff. A little bit of tool storage, concrete blankets, water, planes that I'm super good at flying and that's why they're all trashed. Luckily, I'm better at flying the real ones than these. And in the back, you'll see that the guys are busy working on our new special project. Hey, Kip. Yes, sir. Stop running away. Okay. This, this is Kip. He's the one that welds now. So we have Kip and Eli who are both very talented welders. He's the one welding on that auger downstairs. And every time we come around, he's like a fart in the wind. He's gone. So say hi to Kip. How's it going? Okay, now you can go. We'll let you off the hook. All right. So you might have been able to figure out what we're doing here. This is going to be the new YouTube studio for Dan when he has some stuff or when I visit. Maybe do some lives up here or if we want to do some... <coughs> I'm trying. <laughs> you can just stop and look, just strike a pose. This is going to be the YouTube studio. We haven't had a place to shoot videos inside since I moved to Florida and we lost the studio that was at that point in time in my basement. So we're getting ready to set this up so we have a little bit of a backdrop and a place to do some stuff when we wanna maybe do some review videos or just sit in front of the camera and talk or do lives. So it's not much now, it will be shortly. So by now you're wondering, okay, okay, what's so special? What's underneath the area? What, like, what is that? Well, okay, I'll show you. This all came about because Mark decided to move to Florida. Wipe your feet, wipe your feet. So you remember when I decided to move to Florida and I sold everything in Wyoming? Well, this shop was already under construction and in progress. And when that happened, I thought, you know what? Someday I might want to come back and visit and do some things. So let's make the first 20 feet of the shop an apartment so I have a place to stay and be super comfortable when I come back and visit family or see the team that's here in Wyoming. Let's just make that an apartment. And it turns out that it's been very handy. Alan comes up here bringing materials and he stays here a whole bunch. Veronica comes up and visits our Cody team and she stays here a bunch. My brother brother comes from Hawaii and he stays here a bunch and this is my very first time actually even being here. It's pretty amazing. My sister-in-law decorated it so if you're thinking wow they have some amazing taste it was not me at all it was my sister-in-law Dan's wife that actually decorated this and there's a lot of stuff that you'll see through here like these hooks and this bench and all that stuff was made by Dan. I'll try and point that out as we walk around the apartment. It's pretty impressive honestly. So we come into about the middle of the apartment and on the left hey oh she's running she's running <laughs> It's another person like Kip, they see a camera and they're like, Phew. I'm out. out, out, out. So this is the master bedroom and back here's a bathroom. I literally didn't pick any of the finishes out. That was Demi's job, Dan's wife, that's, that's Demi. She has a store in Cody called Cottonwood Interiors, which is an amazing place to get furniture. So huge shout out to Demi and Cottonwood Interiors for helping us design this. But she picked out all the mirrors, all the light fixtures. I did none of this. The colors on the walls, I didn't do any of that because I have no taste except for picking women who she's hiding in the closet. Hi. Really? You're just gonna hide in the closet the whole time? Then this is one of the boys' rooms, and this is the other boys' room, and then this is the main living area. This bench was done by Dan. This table over here was done by Dan. The floating shelves on the wall were built by Dan. The TV stand was built by Dan. This very dining room table was also built by Dan. And that's how you get furniture that is perfect for every space. Super proud of my brother and his wife. What amazing talent, because this looks amazing and I had nothing to do with it. Demi even picked out all the cabinets and the cabinet colors. Really nice place, really comfortable to stay and it's, it's turned out to be super useful. I think it was a good decision. So this is this week's project and this is why I haven't had a whole lot of time. It's because we've been hurrying to put in a sprinkler system here. We poured some concrete here. We installed the fence last week, which will get some amazing wood defender stain. It's going to be a gray tone, so it should match the shop a little bit. It's going to be kind of neat. So maybe we'll show you that when it gets done. It'll give us a nice area and I have my beach out over here. So if you see, as my wife likes to call them, the Adrianic chairs set up on the Florida beach, just to remind me of home. She's looking at me, I'm getting the evil eye. I may never get kissed again. So we're just trying to make this space comfortable and that's because we may end up renting this out as a Airbnb from time to time. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing around our facility in Powell, learning about how we got started and our humble beginnings back in the shed quarter. And 
even before that when it was Olson Fencing. So hopefully you check those videos out on successful contractors. Check that channel out if you're a contractor. It's an amazing place to get resources and learn about the mistakes that we made when we were early in our contracting business and why we failed. Thanks for coming along. I'm Mark with SWI here in Wyoming this week, and I hope you have a good dang day.